Hello Aries, March 2023. This is for you if you're Aries Sun, Moon, Rising or Venus or if you're cross-watching for another Aries. It's been a bit up and down for you Aries, although it's never boring I think over the last few months. Um, I don't know, I just get a kind of slightly emotionally, you might be a bit annoyed about something or there's something that's just concerning you, there's some anxiety or something. So I'm going to take a couple of cards, first of all, that will signify the energy that we're bringing in. Okay, so let's have a look at that first. What do we need to know for lovely Aries? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's go on the other camera. So... You can see the cards, just bird watching out the window as well. Okay, so Aries, remember this is a general reading. I'm just gonna put some hand cream on, let's, let's, get, let's get ready for this. It's a general reading, so it's not gonna resonate with everybody, but do take what does resonate for you. And if it really is your story, there will be an extended at the end as normal, and also, um, that's the, for that, there's the first link in the description box. But before that, I will be doing a little pick a card at the end of this reading as well. That's a new thing that I'm doing this month. Um, so stay tuned for that. And there'll be just like one, two, three major arcana. So if you've got like a particular question, um, have that ready. Okay, now looky see. Looky see, Aries. We've got the King of Wands, which is gorgeous energy. Very often it represents you because it's the Fire King. And it can be Leo or Sagittarius. For some of you, this may be somebody that you are involved with because it does often come up as well when there's like a connection, when there's a kind of there's a high attraction relationship is how I'm going to put it. Sometimes the King of Wands can be on the other end of the scale and be a bit of a player um, or just be really popular. Often it's somebody who kind of, you know, they're friendly. They've got a bit of human heat about them. Um, for an Aries, this is a pretty good thing actually because you do get on with other fire signs and you do get on with other people who are confident. I think, I think it's very important for Aries. Um, and I'm going to say here particularly Aries women. And this is just because uh, my best friend's an Aries woman. So I've learned a lot. We've grown up together. Very different star signs. Very different people. But I think that... And let me know in the comments section because I always want to know about this. I think Aries women in particular are a bit misunderstood in the astrology books and things. So Aries women, obviously you're ruled by Mars, which is the uh, god of war. And there is a sense in which you really need somebody you can go toe to toe with in a romantic relationship. And the shadow side of that, and I really do want you to pitch in about this, is what my friend calls the, the pigeon shit dilemma. Okay. So this is my Aries friend, and this, this was when we were teenagers, but nevertheless, there's a bit of this, I think, in every Aries woman. Um, and some hapless person, they were going on a date, and a bird shot on his head. And she said, try as she might, the worm turned. She turned a corner and she couldn't really fancy him anymore. She couldn't really respect him. Um, and I think there was another one who tripped up a curb in a certain way. And, I'm, and this is my best friend. She's not shallow and I'm serious about that. She's not. She's actually one of the most. And this is the thing. This is the dichotomy because Aries, as people, will stand up for the underdog. And she does, like, fiercely. She will fiercely defend the underdog. But, you know, when it comes to the heart... The heart wants what it wants and other parts of the body want what they want too. And I don't think you can ever be called to account for what you want in your romantic life because it's we're human and it's just very particular. And I do feel that you do, or Aries women in particular, and I don't, I'm not speaking for the men only because I don't really know it. Well, 
my son is one actually um but yeah that's my son so i'm not going to think about that um but i don't know aries men that i can ask how they feel so i'm just going by my female aries friends that they very much need someone who is at least a challenge um and in younger years that can mean people who are a bit unavailable sometimes because they're a bit alpha and a bit by kind of design a bit unavailable but even as things even out as they tend to do as we get older you do need someone of substance as an aries woman you do you don't need shrinking violets it just doesn't seem to work so the king of wands can represent a romantic interest for you but next to it, do you remember I said there's some anxiety knocking around? And here we are with that three of swords. That is emotional anxiety. And for some of you, it's around this person. Um, this could be an ex person. It could be a current person. I don't know. We're going to take some more cards and find out. But there are some, you know, this, I mean, this is the nicest three of swords, honestly because it has this slightly satin padded heart and I do feel that it can at least be mended. Do you know what I mean? But we just have this sense in which, I don't know, there's, let's take another card for it. There's some anguish there, isn't there? And you may want to ask a question in the pick a card reading at the end, she said, shamelessly flogging the pick a card reading bit at the end, only because it's new and I haven't done it, and I've made paper cut out one, two, and threes, because I don't know how to do tech and put the actual one, number one, two, and three on the screen. I must learn this. Okay. Yeah, look. Then we get the nine of wands, and I seem to remember you had quite a challenging reading in February, didn't you? Now, I can never remember completely, but you did. You had a challenging reading in February. It was quite a strong reading. Now, Nine of Wands is boundaries, something which Aries does not normally have too much trouble with. Unless you're in that other frame of mind that you can get into. And this is the other thing that I've noticed with my Aries bestie. Is that her boundaries are very good on the whole. Especially professionally and in a way that mine aren't. But when it comes to affairs of the heart. If there's a certain person or just if you get under her skin, under her radar. Sometimes the boundaries can disappear and she can struggle with that. And I think it's more difficult to, when you're a fire sign who normally sets your boundaries quite easily to find that you're struggling with it. Okay, we're getting right into the airy psyche here. So do, you know, help me out in the comment section. Let me know how it is for you, because I wonder if there's any common threads between you. So... Aries, this is about boundaries around a certain person. We've got the Three of Cups, which is nice. Um, it could be someone in your friendship group. It could be about taking a relationship to a next level because when you get the Three of Cups, it can be a social card. So it can mean that this person is a fun person who's, you know, sort of in between a friend and a relationship or in your friendship group or something like that. But also it can mean that a relationship is moving from the two of cups to the three. And the three of cups in this instance becomes a kind of a public thing. So in other words, it's like the two of cups is Netflix and chill and it's all very private. And then the three of cups is when you're, you know, adding them to a plus one for a wedding or they're meeting parents or something is happening that declares you are a couple. And it can be just taking it to the next level or for whatever that next level is. Six of Swords, moving on. 
Now that's good because when you get the Six of Swords, you are moving from something that was possibly, again, I'm getting this needling feeling, causing you a bit of pain to something which is much freer and much easier and much less painful. Some of you are managing, because the Three of Swords doubled is like the Six of Swords and you can see here it's a very different energy. The strings are still there and the birds which represent the swords are still going with you. And that's something that happens in the Six of Swords. You don't get to escape them. They still go with you, you know, but you do get to escape whatever the difficulty is that's causing you the anguish. Sorry, I've had a really dry throat. <coughs> so I'm glugging water. Okay. What do we need to know, please, about this situation? It just won't resonate with everyone because this is quite a specific situation that I'm getting coming through. What's the story here? What do we need to know, please, for Aries for March? And of course, happy birthday. Sun moves into your sign on about the 20th of March. We've got a new moon in your sign on the 21st. And it seems only fitting that we have the Knight of Wands. Good. Now, with the Knight of Wands, of course, we have the page, the knight, the queen and the king. And what I really like about this is we get some progression. We get some maturity. So I do feel for some of you that a situation is going to progress. And for some reason, this might trigger you a bit. Somebody might come forward and just say that they're ready or they want to take it public or they want to take it to the next level. And instead of you feeling like glitter and unicorns, you may be asking yourself, can this work? For others of you as well, this is also, because the King of Wands can be... Um, the boss card or being headhunted or moving to a new job, you know, getting promoted. And it's because the Eight of Pentacles as well is Sun in Virgo. It's a work card. Is this working or actually it can represent your actual career where, you know, where you work. So for some of you, again, there may be an opportunity to proceed, to move forward, to expand. But again, you feel a bit suspicious about it. Should we be feeling suspicious? Let's take a card for that. Should we be feeling so antsy and nervy about this? It's just a nervy feeling that I get. <laughs> okay. Five of Pentacles. Now, Five of Pentacles, as you can see here, it always has this slightly interesting tension to it because we have this door and it's seemingly that this person, when you see someone sat like that, you assume they've been locked out. But the key is right there. If I can get it to focus. Come on, camera. Key's right there. Lock is right there. Door is right there. So, hmm. It feels like previously you felt shut out. And maybe you were shut out. For whatever reason. And it feels like now you're being allowed back in or you're being invited back in. But the scars remain from what happened before as they would. Now the Five of Pentacles is also a card of what I call taking a spiritual walk in the snow. So there's a sense in which because in the Rider Waite version, it's got two people who really need to get some help. They're poor, they can't walk properly, it's cold, it's snowing. 
and yet they don't go into the church. They carry on walking in the snow because spiritually there's something bigger than their comfort zone or being comforted. And some of you may be questioning whether there's something bigger than getting what you want, which is weird. Let's take a couple more cards for this. I'm very intrigued. It's almost like letting your head rule your heart, which is something Aries can do most of the time, I want to say. Yeah, look at that five, two fives. So when you get two fives, fives are a disruptor in tarot. There's a sense, oh, and a moon. Oh, look at this. Some of you might be dealing Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio here, water signs. Because I'm just getting, if you look at these three cards, um, and let's just go like that so you can actually see that moon card. I'll be back in a minute. Um, look, you can see here this watery little triangle in the corner. There is a, when we look at the Five of Cups, there is an air of regret over something. There's some sadness about what was lost. And two fives together like this, Five of Pentacles, Five of Loss, are remembering a time when you were out in the cold. You know, they are, you are remembering a time when you lost something. And it could just be that this is a new person, this King of Wands, but there was somebody you lost and it's triggering you because of old wounds. The Three of Swords is an old wounds card. And maybe this is your time to process it this month. Definitely when we get to here, we get this moon card. And when we get the moon card, we've got, it represents Pisces and Cancer in particular as star signs but it also represents the emotions and the subconscious and what you didn't even know about yourself, the feelings you didn't even know you had are kind of stuck in the moon card. It's very intriguing. Nice. We get the Eight of Wands. And the Two of Wands. That's good. That's a real wake up call. So the Eight of Wands is momentum and it's a message coming in. It's a communication that makes you think. And I like that. It could be a text, can be an email, can be someone literally knocking on your door. That is normally electronic with the Eight of Wands for me. So there's plenty happening and maybe there wasn't before and it was easier when nothing was happening. And maybe if you were single, it was easier when nobody had asked. Or maybe when something was in separation with somebody, it was easier just to keep it kind of like that. There is a communication coming in that's going to put a cat amongst the pigeons a little bit here. And will require a reaction from you, but definitely not straight away. And I would wager that this is going to run between about the 20th of March and the 20th of April when we have an eclipse. Um, the sun is in your sign throughout all of that time. So you're very much in your power. But at the same time, you've got a choice down the line. So the two of wands is a definite fire sign person making a choice card. You got two ones, so it could be two people, two things, two ways of doing it. And you have to try and make your mind up between them. But you will be able to, but just not straight away. There's some kind of old karma to deal with here. And either that comes to you in the form of someone new that reminds you of someone else, or it comes from someone you're already involved with and it just needs to be cleared up and dealt with, really. Let's have a look at your pick a card. I'm quite excited by this. In the extended reading, I'm going to look more at the King of Wands because he seems like a bit of an international man of mystery. I'm going to look at the Three of Swords. I'm going to look at the Eight of Wands. 
Um, what's coming in and what do you need to resolve? We'll do the normal questions. How do they feel? What's going on with this person? And we'll channel some messages and have a good old dig around. Okay, so I'm using the Ansata Tarot for the pick a card section. So have a question ready. I'm not going to timestamp them because it's just a short section. So you can, and you can choose more than one. But I would go for one specifically first as your kind of principal card. That's three. That's two. And that is one. Now let's get my paper hearts out because let's face it, I've spent time on these. I'll tell you what, for some reason it's going backwards. Don't ask me why, but that is the order now. Whoa, that's uh, changed it up a bit. Okay, swing number one. Are you ready? Oh, I like that. And I will refer to these in the extended reading as well. We'll clarify them. Okay, justice. It's your opposite sign of Libra. And it's very much you on a good day. So you're a fire sign and your opposite sign of Libra is an air sign. And here you're gonna get an opportunity to be very rational and to weigh things up very carefully and sensibly. And your normal fire sign impulsivity won't come into this. You will be able to, when you get this message, when this sort of event happens you will be able to compartmentalize it and to a certain extent detach from it and make a very rational decision about it and i like the look of that for you a lot also for just a few of you that can actually mean a court case or some kind of legal hearing number two the sun some of you dealing with a Leo, Aries or Sagittarius fire sign. Um, this is lovely. What's going to happen here with the sun is I do feel you're more in line for <coughs> a very open conversation and for, in inverted commas, the truth to come out. And that's not to say that the truth has been hidden from you. I don't think it has. Um, I don't get cards of concealment, you know, or any sneaky beaky here at all. But maybe it just hasn't come up properly yet for whatever reason. And here it is. You can see it and you can both see it and everything is really brought into the light. I love that. Particularly while the sun is in your sign. Okay, so make hay from the 20th of March to the 20th of April. Okay, number three, you get the hermit. Hmm. You may struggle with this a bit more than the other two. This is a sense in which somebody's hiding a little. They're staying out of sight rather than hiding though, and there is a difference. The hermit isn't hiding. The hermit is choosing to be in a cave because the hermit wants the wisdom. Some of you may do this. You may find yourself, um, again, you may have wanted to choose um, number one because there's a sense here of detachment. And to a certain extent, there's been times when you wish this situation would just go away. Also, we've got Cerberus, the three-headed dog in this card, and we've got this sort of Hydra thing at the top. That means there's many faces. You know, even the dog's tail has got three snakes. Don't get caught up in a war of words, number three, because it won't help. If that happens, withdraw and become the hermit, because what you'll do then is make them speak. And I think that that will solve it a lot better. How strange, woof, Aries. Okay, I'm gonna go do the, your extended reading. 
do leave me a comment about being in Aries and what it's like for you in terms of what we talked about at the beginning, whether you need someone to go toe to toe with you, how you feel about that, you know, the pigeon shit syndrome. Um, and also, what else was I going to say? I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say. I'm going to go and have to have a lie down before I do the extended reading at this rate. And I will see you on the other side. Namaste.